A good friend of mine, Matt, from the Warp Perception YouTube channel, loaned me a rotary engine which has a see-through cover on it, so you can actually see the fuel burning as the engine is running. It's pretty impressive to see how this thing works. Last time we tested it using jet fuel. The engine actually ran, it created a whole lot of smoke, a lot of fun testing jet fuel. Today we're gonna try 100 octane low lead aviation fuel in this engine and several other engines to see just how well it actually works. So let's get the testing underway. We'll be testing aviation fuel in a fuel injected generator to see how it handles the load. We'll also be testing it in this small engine to see if it causes lead buildup on the spark plug or inside the combustion chamber. We'll be using this engine with a see-through cylinder head to see how the flame color changes compared to regular gasoline. Okay, now that we've established our baseline with gasoline, I'm gonna go ahead and allow this engine to cool off. Then we'll remove the cylinder head and clean up the combustion chamber. After that, we'll run this engine on aviation fuel. A quick look at the safety data sheet. Aviation fuel is low lead content aviation gasoline fuel for piston engined aircraft. Restrictions on use. This product is not to be used as a solvent or cleaning agent for lighting or brightening fires or as a skin cleanser. Avgas has two different hazardous components listed. Gasoline low boiling point naphtha, tetraethyl lead. If you want to know more about the ingredients, you can always look up these cast numbers online and get a whole lot more information about each of the contents. So aviation fuel also contains toluene, xylene, cyclohexane, ethylbenzene, inhexane, trimethylbenzene, benzene, naphthalene, and cumene. So it has a blue color to it. The flash point is negative 40 degrees Celsius, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the engine cools down, we'll remove the cylinder head and see if we can see any visible presence of lead. We're also going to do a compression test to see if the lead has had an impact on the compression. Wow, you can really see the lead in this spark plug. It's a lot lighter color than you typically see on a spark plug. Wow, there's quite a bit of lead build up on the inside of this engine, especially near the spark plug. There's a clump of it right there. Also, there's quite a bit of it near the intake valve, and you can also see quite a bit near the exhaust valve. There's clumps of lead that have built up around other areas of the cylinder head as well.
So this Predator engine has a Tillerson mechanically injected carburetor and the engine was running very rich to the point of where it wouldn't idle. So I went ahead and adjusted the air fuel ratio. So now it seems to be running a lot better. So let's see how this engine runs on aviation fuel and see if we can achieve a top speed of better than 29 miles per hour. We previously ran this engine on jet fuel and actually ran fairly well. So the question is, will a fuel injected engine run really well on aviation fuel? Now with aviation fuel, we had a bit of a problem with it in the go-kart. It was just running way too rich and we had to lean it out. So the question is, will this engine actually adjust the air fuel ratio enough to make this engine run really smoothly? Since we're going to be using this in a rotary engine, I'm going to go ahead and add some two-stroke oil in it to make sure we have enough lubrication so we don't cause damage to the engine. I added two tablespoons or one ounce to the 30 ounces of aviation fuel, so we have about a 30 to 1 mix. We're going to see how low lead aviation fuel works in this see-through engine. Thanks again to everyone that suggested we test aviation fuel in a gasoline engine. I had a lot of fun testing it, especially in that rotary engine. Really cool to see that engine run on aviation fuel. So thanks again to Matt for loaning it to me. Now I definitely don't recommend using aviation fuel in your car just because it's going to cause problems for the catalytic converter and probably the sensors as well. All my video ideas come from viewers, so I hope you'll take time to provide a video recommendation. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.